Many metro area streets looking more like a snowstorm than a thunderstorm after last night's wild weather. We have team coverage of all of this storm. Marshall Zellinger investigating problems in the Lower North Fork burn area. Russell Haythorne looking at a new law involving hail damage. But we start with Tyler Lopez in Castle Rock with the storm damage shut down at King Supers. Tyler? That's right, Mike. Now, the pharmacy for folks who rely on this store is still open. It's on the northern edge, just under those massive clouds that are now building. That is still open, but the store is closed. It's likely to remain closed through the weekend. That's because of all the hail that built up on the roof, and that left damage inside that was nothing short of surprising. They're cleaning every aisle inside this King Supers in Castle Rock. Water fills most walkways. And it's the water damage that will bring down most of the ceiling panels. I don't know that I've ever seen a store damaged quite like this from a storm. 35 customers went to the back of the store, down into the basement, at 8.30 Wednesday night when the storm hit hardest. No one was hurt. That was definitely a first time. <laughs> definitely a little scary, but never will forget that ever again. Now the arduous task of accounting for all the items lost or damaged. At this time, I don't know that we have an estimated time on when the store will reopen. Outside, more than 16 hours later, hail is still piled up on the roof as clouds build again to the north. A reminder that last night's fury could soon be repeated. Here's a live look now to the north and the west. Those clouds are building. Around 1 o'clock, we saw some similar clouds, but they broke up by 3 o'clock. Now, they look a lot more serious. Folks in this area saying last night was one of the worst storms they've seen in this area in many, many years. Live in Castle Rock, Tyler Lopez, 7 News. Oh, what a mess. Thank you, Tyler. Now we continue our team coverage with 7 News reporter Marshall Zellinger inspecting erosion damage in the lower North Fork burn, that's the fire burn area. Marshall, it has to be a muddy mess up there. In some places, Mike, it was only a matter of time before the residents up here saw the after effects of the fire. First, the images people will recognize from a fire. Clearly, the burned out trees nearby, it still smells like fire up here. And as I touch these trees, you can still see the ash and soot easy to come off. What's a good sign, however, where I'm at, there is some vegetation on the ground. However, there are many places where that is not the case, and it underscores the next problem the residents will face. Woke up this morning to discover the side of my hill falling away. Kristen Moeller has already lost her home and belongings. Now look at her land. Not only burned, but falling away. Last night's storms have caused small landslides. Erosion, a major concern after a wildfire. So far, no one taking responsibility to prevent this. Where do we find the money to do this? Where do we find the time to do this? If we have claims that are ever paid, that's going to be sometime in the future. So right now, what do we do? We want to know why the residents may have to pay for the damage when they weren't cause of the cause of the fire that you see the images still of. We're still trying to get that answer tonight. The State Forest Service has directed me to two conservation uh, districts that may help with funding for this, but that's not the case right now. The residents being told they're likely having to pay for this up front and add that to the claim that they can uh, go to the state with part of what the governor signed earlier this week, but the residents still asking if the State Forest Service was the cause of all this. Why aren't they paying to prevent the erosion today? Reporting live, Marshall Zellinger, 7 oh, News. Very unfortunate situation. Thank you, Marshall. Colorado Springs also hit hard by these storms. A handful of people rescued from their cars near the Citadel Mall after they became submerged by floodwaters and hail. Nearby homes were flooded. One family says their home may be a total loss and they don't have flood insurance. Air Tracker 7 with a great view of some of the hail. These homes in the foothills uh, actually completely covered hours after the storm. At 7 News reporter Russell Haythorn is joining us now. Russell, the storm hit just as the governor was signing a measure to help protect homeowners from roofing ripoffs. How's that for timing, Mike? The governor signed the bill into law yesterday, and it was one of those bills that took effect immediately right before this wild weather hit. No, no problem. With another huge thunderhead brewing behind him, Ian McKinley, owner of Celtic Roofing, works fast. There's two holes in the valley, three. Here's the hail hits right here. And look at this one right here, just pounded right straight through. Three-month-old roof totaled. Verify damage and get any sort of tarping and protection done right away. Randy Brothers and his team at Elite Roofing work to beat the next storm, too. 
My phone has not stopped. But these legitimate roofers are up against more than just the next storm. Uh, there's a lot of fly-by-night roofers, and um, you need to look them up. You don't just sign a sales contract because he's a slick salesman. Make sure they're not charging you or anything. They should do a free, no-hassle inspection. Because of the issue with scammers, the governor signed a new law yesterday. Among other things, it forces roofers to hold your payment until the majority of the work is completed. And it gives homeowners the ability to cancel contracts if the roofer doesn't start on time. Guys are starting roofing companies today and sending out, you know, 10 guys out there to sell deals, but they've never done it. A lot of people are kind of on the fence about it, you know, but uh, it was designed as a consumer protection law. No one should give a roofer any money up front. Yeah, there's another one. 